George Nori will take the notoriety anyway. <laughs> he, he, he won't mind. Right. He won't mind one way or the other. And I and I didn't know if you'd had seen George Nori because he was supposed to be at the Everett Theater this this summer, I think. And so yeah, I'm not sure when it is. I just, but I know that he was going to be at the Everett Theater, which is an interesting place because uh, that place has got to be haunted, if if I know anything. But, oh really? Oh yeah. Wow. But uh, oh, I I I've I spoke I've spoken to uh, some of the managers of the place, and and basically back in the day they used to say uh, it was haunted, and then they didn't want to know anybody to know. And then, and but ah. now it's cool for everything to be haunted anymore, you know. <laughs> you <laughs> right, gotta remember right. back in the days, whatever being haunted was not a cool thing, and now it's a, uh, now it's a, uh, it's a, uh, if to stay in the haunted room, it's three times the price, you know, because I want to stay in the haunted yeah. room. But <laughs> so, what does that say? What does that say about us? Well, I think it means that I think I think that that means that we are becoming a lot more curious about these different types of experiences that yeah that we all want to be part of i mean you know there's yeah that it and so it's not that it's i mean some people will be really super cynical and say well i you know i just want to put these people on tv and let's look at them and and make fun of them i mean that happens i mean that's that's the way it is where if you're in entertainment in any way shape or form be prepared for 25 percent of the people to absolutely hate you but that's okay if they're talking about you you know it's only if they hate you and they don't talk about you that it's a problem (laughs) but but the thing that 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 uh that i wanted to say is so when you go to these conferences uh now you set up a booth and the booth uh the people can come by and talk to you about the different experiences and and when i was speaking to michael uh a while ago and michael's still on the line but whenever whenever i was speaking to michael he said oh like literally you guys will film uh their um um their testimonials uh i I think testimonials probably a bad word what what would you say testimony how would how story tell the they tell the story right the motto is tell tell us your story right and so is that is that something where um at that point in time um, I think that's a good thing because at least people can at least say their story because I know that this seems to be uh one of those things that's true in in Bigfoot and 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 I and I'm sorry I go back to Bigfoot but that's the that's the universe I know whenever I'm talking about speaking at a conference and doing those things because I've spoke I've sp- I've spoken at Bigfoot conferences and I've given talks on Bigfoot and I've do I've done these different types of things like that. But it seems like a lot of times that the the uh, people who organize these conferences don't think of the people who are going there. And reason and, and to me, the only reason I ever went to a Bigfoot conference was because I saw a Bigfoot. It wasn't because I wanted to hear anybody else talk about Bigfoot. I wanted them to tell me if my story was accurate or not. So I think you're actually doing the promoters of this conference a big favor in in a lot of ways uh, because of the fact that, you know, uh, people really want to talk about their story. And so when and so is how does that how does that work whenever people uh Come to um, come, come to your booth or or whatever. Uh, what what kind of materials do they? Well, mo- yeah, most of them most of them are shy. Yeah, they they know I, I don't want to. Maybe you know another time, and then they come back later, and they're a little more receptive. Right. People are shy about talking about their story, but once they do, they're really relieved to get it off their subconscious off their mind as well right and and so do you, is that is that one of those things where at, at at a certain point in time do you find that with with ufo uh people who've uh, seen a ufo and i and i understand there's different um 
versions of seeing a UFO. There's, you know, there's a close encounter to close encounter four, I thought was one. And now I, somebody actually told me about CE5, which I think is even something different than that. I don't know if you've heard of that, but I think that has to do with. Sure. Yeah. Do, do, are you familiar with what CE4 is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where the intention is to, to communicate and have contact. And you can do that like Stephen Greer's group uh, through meditation. You just focus and, and you, you know, send out that positive high frequency and there they come in. Mm -hmm. We do that in our sky watches. Right. We do that. Same thing. CE5 is the, is the fifth level of intention. Right. And so when you when you're on, uh, well, let's uh, we'll, we'll talk about the night watches here in a, in a little bit, because I know you guys have some coming up, but I just wanted to sort of walk somebody through the process of, OK, you see uh, uh you see uh, the UFOI team at a uh, an event, and um, yeah. so they can come to you. And so, do you have all the group there that that's there to talk about? Um, you know, do, do you have your? Do, well, you, I'm sure you try to have everybody there that you can, and not everybody can do it because uh, obviously this is not your full time employment for most of the people who are there. Uh, but so you do, you do try to have some everybody from a from a certain um, uh, I don't know specialization there to say this person can look at your videos or this person can look at your uh, your your film or or is that something that where you know everybody feels comfortable enough um, to sort of make a uh, you know a, a initial uh, judgment on something to say oh well that's you know, well, I've did some research around that, and that's been reported, and that was a weather balloon or, or whatever. Uh, what what's the process for that? What how how so somebody somebody comes to you and says, "I saw this thing in the sky, and it doesn't look like it's a Photoshop job." What happens then? Does does somebody who do does somebody research the geographical area, and does somebody take, um, you know? No, we just film this. We just film this story. Mm-hmm. We we don't investigate or or look into what's true or not. We just listen to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so but so they they do come to they they do come to you and they can they can express their, their themselves and and tell their story and and at least get that part off their chest and. You, I, I imagine you guys have a pretty, pretty good way of at least, well, not maybe not saying, um, yes, you definitely did see a UFO or definitely didn't see a UFO, but you definitely no. believe that these folks, we, yeah, we 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 don't we don't go there. It's, mm-hmm. it's not for us to judge that. Right. We just listen to the stories, and we created a DVD. Lee Strauss created a DVD from all the stories that were shared and he, he chose the ones that he felt were right and, um, and appropriate. So we, we trust his, his knowledge and sensitivity on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but when we were at, when we were at Quinault, we had so much fun. Um, we did a presentation. Oh, I think it was, it was an hour. We each got to, share um each member of the i team got to share our strength and what we were there to contribute so people told about their abduction about their hypnotherapy i got to do a trance session angel michael came in and and gaia came in that was really fun and um it was just very enlivening and genuine we just got to be who we are and in an hour, we just, ha- I felt, got to make an impact. And I think Johnny Manson appreciated what we, what we brought. Mm-hmm. And we're looking forward to being there again at, at the Quinault event. Right. And so, so you guys do do that. And so those are, that's one of those things where people could look that up on UFO I team and get, get an idea of where you're going to be and to, and so, sort of, yeah. To, yeah. And and then yeah. and then you've got your uh, your Glacier Washington project, which is 
um, something that's a little bit more developed than it sounds like. It's got the, um, you know, your town hall meetings and um, and witness testimonies and things like that. And then you also do the night sits. Now let's let's focus on the night sits about what happens at a night sit and uh, what is it that uh, what 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 is it that people can expect to see at a night set. I, I imagine that if you've got the kind of equipment that it sounds like you do, you're going to at least see some um, space uh, space debris or spaceships that are of a terrestrial origin, like this the um, satellites, or you're going to see the space uh, station. And uh, isn't it bad? I'm so bad. I, I almost said mere space station. <laughs> <laughs> it's been up in the sky for forever, but uh, it's, yeah, yeah. It's I'm not the expert at this. Um, we go out, and Lee has all this equipment. It's incredible equipment. Michael could talk on and on about it. I can't. Yeah. Um, it's just there are there are. Well, I can talk about my experience. Absolutely. At Mount Baker yeah. a couple yeah, years ago. When let's do that. When I was. I was with the group, and um, and there's this, um, oh, my gosh, I forget what it's called, but there's this place we go that's really intense. It's, got, it's like a vortex, and they were telling me about it, that people have these weird experiences there. Um, so and this was a night watch, even before we started looking up, up above to the sky. Um, I just... Again, it was like that time at Mount uh, Shasta in front of a crystal. This energy just came at me, and I, I had to fall over. I had to, ha- had to hang on to my friend Jean from being knocked over. It's like this intense force. So that's my contact. That's my kind of seeing them, is feeling them energetically with my electromagnetic aura, my body, you know, my energetic field. That's how I come in contact with them. Others can, you know, we we can see the different orbs in the sky and we can communicate to them and light up, light up, and they'll light up and they'll do this and that. And other times there won't be as much activity. Um, It's just, it's fun. It makes you feel part of something much larger than your your ego body on Earth. Right. Right. And so you mentioned Isetti Ranch earlier. Have have you had the opportunity to go to Isetti Ranch yet? I I've been there several times. It's a beautiful place, beautiful people. I love their medicine wheel. It's where I met the Arcturians and got confirmation from the Arcturians on their I guess they call it a galactic wheel. You you walk this wheel and when you feel like stopping, you stop and you listen to, okay, I'm in this segment. Um, the different um, star nations are designated on that wheel. And I kept going to the Arcturians. So it helped me find my star family. I'm very grateful for a study for that. Mm-hmm. And the orbs, the orbs in the sky are incredible. Yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah. And, 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 at that at that time now you know the the thing about it is every, everybody i think you know if you if you look at uh radio talk show show hosts i i don't i don't know too many in the paranormal world that hasn't been to his city ranch um but okay. uh but you know because they they are very drawn to the fact that um they 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 want to see these different things. And, and you know, James Gilliland, he, he talks about the fact that, uh, you know, that you can see the side of Mount Adams opening up and spaceships, you know, the sound of spaceships uh, opening and coming out of those. And I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I, that's that's not what I, I, I experienced at the time. But, you know, it doesn't mean that I haven't met other people that haven't said, oh, yeah, that's, that's exactly – what what happened and and so i mean these are people who yeah they're in the in the uh, paranormal radio business and so maybe they're predisposed towards it or whatever but you know it's it, but a lot of those people are people who would you'd say are naturally naturally born skeptics um 
you know, not like me. I mean, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that says, oh, tell me your story, I'll believe it, you know, unless 